Hey, what's up? John Sanmez from simpleprogrammer.com. Today I'm going to be talking about a topic that I know a lot of you will be interested in, which is moving from software development to game development. I would love to figure this out myself. I want to be a game developer. Who doesn't want to be a game developer? <laughs> anyway, before I get to that, the, I do have to give you a cliffhanger here, which is to check out Hire.com. They are the sponsor for Simple Programmer. We love them because they are awesome and they help developers get jobs and they do it in a way that is not a pain in the uh, the butt like a, a lot of a lot of ways that you get jobs and apply for all these jobs and <clears throat> you know send out your resume just go to hire.com forward slash simple programmer and what you'll see is a place to fill out an application and you fill out that application and then hire.com actually gets companies to come and talk to you to basically fight over you instead of you sending out all these resumes all over the place. To me, this just makes sense. It seems like the future of hiring and it's a lot better than all these pushy recruiters, right? You're just going to that one place. So. If you're interested at all, go to simple program or go to hire.com for slash simple programmer. You get a double bonus instead of a thousand dollars. They give you a thousand dollars twice. That's two thousand dollars for those of you that are mathematically challenged if you get a job through them. So it's worth checking out for sure. And you'll be helping to support these YouTube videos in Simple Programmer, which is always cool because you know, simple programmer, you're here, right? You like it. All right, so let's talk about this here, about moving from software development to game development here. Uh, hi, John. Maybe this is a lot common among developers. It is. <laughs> I want to apply new job posting, which appear to be more challenging from what I was used to work on. Challenging because those jobs use more recent tech than, uh, than my former employers needed uh, from me at the time they hired me. And the thing is that I was feeling stuck since some time ago. I know that for me to be a viable candidate, I need to qualify uh, to that newer technology, say Node, Angular, Unity, Android, and for that to happen, I need to study. After creating something with that newer tech, I might be able to post that experience in my resume, but I know that personal project experience will be years behind what someone could acquire by using a professional environment. Wrong. It, it's the opposite, actually. Honestly, it is. Like the stuff you build on your own is you, when you you'll find it's better than the stuff that's done in the professional world a lot of times because you you learn more. You learn more. I tell. I'm telling you, you learn more. Okay. Um, so how do I measure if my self-acquired knowledge is up to task for applying for job postings? There's one more thing related to the above, and the short story is I would like to change my professional job from let's say common software development to game development in which my experience is only from simple games written in computers I started learning uh, pro programming. Maybe you will tell me something similar to the above approach in that I need to build experience up, but can you comment on some techniques, paths, shortcuts, whatever could help me on that change? Thanks in advance, Fernando. Fernando, I have an answer for you. So. I already gave you part of the answer here, which is no, your personal projects, that's where you're going to learn the most. Okay. Maybe people aren't going to, you know, be, take them as relevant on your, on your, on your resume, right? Maybe they won't, that won't count as real world job experience, but there's a way to do this. This is what you need to do. Make a game development company, Fernando Enterprises, whatever it is. Okay. And get a LLC or whatever it is, you know, it sounds like your, your email says you're from Mexico. So I don't know whatever the corporate entity is there, but start a business. Okay. An official business it doesn't have to make money, but start a business so that you've got get a nice little logo or whatever, so that you've actually got a game company. You can be the only employee. That's totally fine. You get to make the rules. You can, this is totally legitimate. Okay. And start building games for that company, start building these projects on your own, okay? And use the technologies that you want to use that you think are going to be valuable. Look for companies that are using these. Unity 3 is probably really good for game development and build some games under this company, okay? And put them out in the store. This is going to get you experience. Now, where to start? What kind of games should you be building here? I would make clones of stuff, right? Do a do a Pong clone. I no, don't do Pong. Don't start there. I think you've got enough experience to. But maybe you know Pac-Man, you know Pitfall, whatever you know the kind of basic do platformer game. Do do this kind of stuff and just make clones of games. Don't try to be creative and make your own thing and stuff like that right yet. 
right? Because you need to gain experience and you need to show that you got some versatility. So go and do that stuff. Use your existing programming knowledge, but build that game company. It's gonna take some time. In the meantime, start applying for jobs not thinking that you're gonna get any of these game development jobs, but just so you can see what the interviews are like. What are these questions that they're asking? What are, you know, see if you can get interviews, you know, try and get as much feedback as possible. Try, you know, if you can even talk to them, say, hey, yeah, no, I know, I know. Yeah, I'm not even closely qualified. I know, I know, I, I get it. But could you just help me? I'm, I'm trying to, like, I'm, I'm really shooting for a year or two from now to get a job in game development. Could you just give me some tips, some advice, like what you would do, you know, knowing that you're not gonna hire me anyway, Way. Like, and you could just even talk to recruiters, you could even call up, you could even send emails, right? With this, what, what would you do in my situation? What, what would be the best course of action? I really like your company, I really like to work for you, right? You know, what, what could I do that would set my, myself up for two years down the road, okay? You gotta be long term thinking here. And, and, and these is, this is just like, you know, I know it, it, some of this comes out as common sense when, when I say this stuff, but you can do this, right? This is totally acceptable, right? Go to the meetup group, the luncheon, go to the, the youth user group, the game developer user group, do things like that that's gonna build you these connections and in a non-threatening situation, right? So you don't have to be a predator. <laughs> you can come up to someone, a game development company manager, and you can be like, look, I'm not applying for a job right now, so don't worry, I'm not you know, trying, but in a year or so, I would like to possibly work for your company. What could I do? What, what, would, what would make it, you know, or ask, are you willing to just take me on your ring? I won't take much of your time. I'll buy you lunch like once a month and you just give me, I'll just show you my progress, tell you what I'm doing and, you know, and, and, and you just give me some pointers, okay? If you did that, if you found three or four game development managers at game development companies, right? This is for all of you out there that think outside the box, okay? I, tell, I, I could come up with a thousand w variations of this. There are ways you could do this. It's just one way of thinking outside the box. But if you did that, right? If you found four or five of them, right? And you took them out to lunch once a month and you had your sights set on getting a, a job uh, from a, a year from now, do you or do you not think that would have like a 95% success rate, right? So easy to do, all you gotta do is buy them lunch. All you gotta do is do what they're saying, right? To establish these relationships. Who's gonna refuse you, right? You just gotta find out where they are. That's not hard to do, okay? Or send some emails and say, hey, can I buy you lunch? People like lunch, okay? They like to eat lunch. I don't eat lunch, I fast until five o'clock, but people like lunch. Think outside the box. Think about these ways you can do this where you don't have to come in the front door with a resume and, and hope. Instead, I mean, you're gonna have a higher, higher chance of success if you figure out ways to think outside the box. I'm gonna plug my book on uh, Software Developer Career Guide, Ultimate Software Developer Career Guide, whatever it's called now. You can check it out here because I have some chapters on thinking outside the box as far as job. If you, if you sign up there, what happens is you'll email address, you'll get chapters emailed to you for free. You can, of course, buy the full book when it, when it's you know finally out, maybe out by now, who knows? If so, you'll get an email that says you can buy the book. But uh, but check it out because I've got a lot of stuff. It's it's a big book, big. It covers the whole career. Anyway, if you like this video, uh, go ahead and click the subscribe button if you haven't already. If you have, I know it's annoying when I keep on saying click the subscribe button. Well then you know thumb, while I'm doing that, just hit a, hit the thumbs up or hit the share. Have you ever used the share feature on on YouTube? It's pretty awesome. If you don't know about it, click share and you can like share it out to social media and be like, look at my my friend John. He's awesome. <laughs> it's simple programmer. Check it out. Anyway, I'll talk to you next time. Take care.